I recently made a split density quad mob farm in my bedrock guide world, and many of you wanted a true tutorial on how to make it. This farm is one of the fastest you can make on bedrock edition, getting you over 20,000 drops per hour. It uses a few different very important game mechanics that I will explain to you as we go. Things like split density cap, high simulation distance, a special type of trident killer, and more. This will be one of my longer tutorials, and every single section is extremely important, so don't skip any of it. If you're feeling some hype about this farm already, then drop a like now, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and leave me a comment down below on what you plan on using all of these drops for. Now I'm going to give you two material lists. One material list is for all four of the modules combined using the tinted glass, not using the method that you see on those guys, because that's the method I prefer to use. And just know that anytime I tell you a specific type of building block to use, you just need to use a solid block of any type. It doesn't matter what type of block it is, but I'm going to give you the name of the block that I used, such as polished deep slate. That way you can keep track of what I used where if you're trying to do something similar to what I did or separate things out differently like I did. So that being said, all four of the farm modules together, you're looking at 23,520 polished deep slate, 1,648 polished deep slate slabs, 13,440 scaffolding, 1,380 tinted glass, 602 glass, 16 pistons, 32 repeaters, 16 observers, 48 fence gates, 20 magma blocks, 211 packed ice, 22 polished blackstone buttons, four spruce trap doors, 193 redstone dust, and four powered rails. As far as the system down below, the storage and AFK system, you are looking at 529 polished deep slate, 145 iron blocks, 109 smooth stone, 64 glass, six trap doors, 99 redstone dust, 268 hoppers, 200 chests, 22 redstone torches, 24 repeaters, 24 stained glass, 24 comparators, two droppers, two buckets of lava, two polished blackstone buttons, 11 scaffolding, and one lever. And approximately zero wandering traders. Okay, so first thing as we get started here, I need you guys to understand how a couple of things work because this is extremely important when you go to make this farm. Do not skip this. I know a lot of you will be tempted to. Don't do it. First, you will need to make sure your world is set to simulation distance eight or higher. You cannot see this while you are in the world. If you are playing on a realm or you are playing on a server, this will not work unless the server has a sim distance set higher, which I can tell you odds are it is not and will not because it does not run well on servers that way. As you go into your world settings here, you can see simulation distance. I have it set to 12. As long as you have it at least set to eight, then you are good to go. If you're playing on a realm, a server, or if you're just playing in a single player world and you have not changed the simulation distance setting yourself, it is going to start at four. So make sure you go in and you increase this, whether it's when you start the world or whether it's a world that already exists. Now, once that is a thing, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to use this marker pack here that will just show me a couple of basic things. This is by Foxy No Tail. If you're on PC, you can use this. Let me go through and set it to this first. This right here is showing the spawning radius and despawning radius. Now, specifically, this is for simulation distance four, which is the red circle here. This is the maximum size in which mobs can spawn. So as you can see why this farm does not work unless you do it on a simulation distance six or higher world because simulation distance four spawning radius is way too small. This inner radius, though, this is the same for all simulation distances. This is the area in which mobs cannot spawn around you. So that is why we don't have any farms close to us because we don't want them close. Mobs would not spawn anyways. Now I have a chunk grid set up here and I wanted to explain one other thing here for you because this is really important with how the farm works. This has to do with a split density cap. So the way that the game works is whenever a mob tries to spawn inside of a chunk, anywhere in a chunk, and all your world is made up of these chunks, right? The game will check to see if there's any mobs within four chunks of where that mob tries to spawn. And when it does check that, it's looking for how many other mobs are in the area. The game will allow up to eight mobs on the surface which anything above ground like this block right here would be surface. Whereas all of these layers down below in our farm, those layers below are part of the cave cap, which will allow 16 mobs to be spawned. So eight surface, 16 cave. We have one surface layer. In this case, we have nine cave layers, which is going to get us as many mobs as possible. Now, one of two things happens. Either it does this check and there are less than the cap number of mobs in the area, which means it will allow a mob to spawn or adversely it will do the check and it will see up oh, there's eight mobs on the surface. 16 mobs in the cave. I cannot spawn a mob and the spawning will fail. Now, what a split density cap means very specifically is that we have four different areas where this density cap actually applies.
size. So this tower right here will have its own eight and 16 cap versus that one that one and that one, they are all separate. We've done that by separating them out by four chunks. So now if this cap right here is full of mobs, that's fine because we are one chunk. You can see the dividers right there, two chunks, three chunks, and four chunks. We have four chunks between this farm and this farm, meaning that they are separate caps. Again, same thing this way too, one, two, three and four. So to summarize, each one of these pods can have eight mobs spawn on the surface, 16 mobs spawn down in the caves, and they are four chunks apart from each other, meaning that they all have their own separate density cap. So that means a total of 32 mobs can spawn on the surface with this farm and 64 mobs in the caves or in the other layers. This makes this farm four times faster than your average farm right off the bat. Now here I am creating a new world just on a random seed and just to show you guys again one last time make sure you set that simulation distance to eight or higher. Now when it comes to choosing a location in your world anywhere typically is going to be fine. The main thing you will want to make sure you avoid is being over top of anything that could be classified as a river. So for me, and especially in Bedrock Edition where it's almost impossible to tell what is a like what a biome specifically is, anything that looks like it could be a river, stay away from it. If you want to go over top of the middle of the ocean, that's fine. Or if you want to base this thing above the land, that is fine too. Whichever way is fine. But one thing that you're going to make sure that you do is that you get this thing high enough above ground to where you don't have to worry about mob spawn happening below you. Now, after looking around for a little while, I kind of found that my best spot here in this world is going to be out here in the middle of the water. But what you're going to do here is going to apply no matter where you decide to do your farm. Just keep in mind that if it's going to be over top of land, ultimately, you're going to be building up about 130 blocks above the highest point of the land. So like if your center is going to be down in here, then you would want to be 130 blocks above this tall little mountain piece right here just to make sure that no mobs can spawn on the surface. Now, in my particular case here, I'm going to be using the markers pack add one by Foxy No Tail, just like we used earlier to easily find my chunk borders. If you do not have access to this pack because you're playing on console or you're playing on a mobile device, you will need to use some other way to make sure that you're able to find your chunk borders. Now we can do this process either down below here at ground level, which may be easier for you, or we could do it up above. I guess it just depends on how you are doing your calculations. In our case though, we're gonna do it up above. For us going 130 blocks up in the air has brought us up to Y level 194. Now first, I'm just gonna make myself a little base platform to stand on here. If we can go out maybe like three blocks in each direction on this thing, it'll just give us a little place to work from. And you are gonna to wanna to make sure you have an easy way to get up and down here. So whether that be a ladder or a scaffolding tower or water or something like that, or if you just have a bunch of rockets, whatever works for you, but you will have to go up and down probably somewhat frequently. So keep that in mind. Now, like I said, we're gonna use the marker pack here and I'm gonna probably want to base things off of, I don't know, maybe about right here actually. So that way we're like in the corner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go two chunks this way and make a mark and two chunks this way and make a mark. And we're gonna count the chunk that we're in. So if we count the chunk that we're in right here, we'll count this as one chunk over. And this is gonna take us just outside of our little chunk border area here like this. And then we wanna be two chunks this way and two chunks this way. That way we know we have a four chunk gap in between. So we're on a border right here. So we're gonna go, wanna go two chunks over this way. This is chunk one chunk two and we want to be outside of that chunk so maybe i'm going to go like put a little extra mark right here this needs to be the corner of one of our farms now we're inside a chunk one here and then we are now inside a chunk two here i'm going to mark it like this is like that's a corner and that's a corner so let me just kind of show you what we got here really quick we have one two three and four chunks in between this corner right here and this corner right here. And our farms are gonna be built in like this direction, right? So they'll be going this way to make sure that no mobs are spawning inside of this area. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And we've done that here too. So again, just to kind of show you, we have one, two, three, and four chunks in between these right here. One, two, three, 
and four chunks in between these. So they're all separated 100% properly. And to make it a little bit easier for me to get around, I can leave these little walkways up to make it easy to walk between the different platforms. Okay, now we're gonna work this one pod at a time or one module at a time because once you do one all the other ones are done exactly the same so pick whichever one you want it doesn't matter what and we're going to make this platform 21 blocks in each direction from your corner now the next thing you're going to want to do is find the center of your platform if you pick the center you should be able to go out 10 blocks in each direction and then you will see that that's these that's the 11th block is the center so we got the center right here and from the center block you're going to want to go up by nine so that's going to be one two three four five six seven eight and nine we're up nine blocks and we're going to make a five by five platform. So just go out two blocks in each direction. OK, now facing the center on the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and we're going to knock out these five blocks right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little like tracing around. So we're going to go out like this. One, two, three and four. Work our way across and then come back in. And then across this middle section here, we're gonna put some magma blocks right there, just like that. Now to make it a little bit easier for you to follow along with watching this, I'm gonna fly for this part. I've been trying not to do this for the most part so you guys can follow along a little bit easier, but I need to make this part extremely easy to see and be clear about. First of all, we're just gonna go ahead, we're gonna border all of this all the way around and actually all the way around this part too. Next thing we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up making our floor down here. First, the floor that comes below the magma blocks. We're going to come down one, two blocks over. This is our floor for this. We can close this in and bring this across one more. And we're going to come down to that floor level like right here. So you see we got the floor of this area right here and we have the floor of this area right here. We're going to come over one on this side and then over here. We're going to come over two like this. Now we need to make a little wall behind this. And then we're going to close this off right here. Now, what this area right here specifically is going to be is the spider killer. We filter all the spiders out this way. So that way they don't clog up the system when they fall down. Spiders are the biggest problem and the thing that slows down mob farms the most. So we want to make sure the spiders are not going to be an issue. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to close this little chamber off right here, just like this. We're going to want to do some fence gates and we're going to want to do them in a specific way. We want to put one fence gate right here on the one side like this and then a fence gate right here on the two side like this. And I'm going to put water right here and water right here. You see, this makes a water flow to the center. This is where all of our mobs are going to go down. I'm going to want to put some fence gates right in front of this gap right here two, three, four, and five. And then some fence gates across here. One, two, three, four, and five. And then I wanna put water on each one of these magma blocks. And then I wanna put water across here. So you'll see the flow. Normal mobs, they're just gonna kinda of float in and then they'll float down and then make their way to the center. Spiders can't fall in this gap. They're actually gonna end up reaching across, getting stuck right in here, and the magma blocks will burn them up, and then the string will end up falling down and falling into here. You're not gonna be getting that looting three effect from the trident killer we're about to build from this on the spiders. Therefore, you're also not gonna be getting spider eyes because the spiders are not being player killed, but this way is preferred because it gets the spiders out the way much faster and makes the farm in total a lot faster than it would be otherwise. Next, we're gonna to wanna to come down to here and then we're gonna to need to make a little floor right below and it's gonna be a four block little square. This is where our mobs are gonna fall for the trident killer. So we just wanna make sure that two of these blocks are lined up under here and the other two blocks are facing that right side area, just how we were doing up there. Okay, now we're actually gonna go ahead and surround all of this by one more little circle of solid blocks like so. We're gonna grab a piston and now we're gonna make our trident killer really quick on the right hand side of the middle in each direction you're going to face a piston just like that as you can see how they are placed here we're going to place solid blocks all around them except for this one right there again everything's favoring the right hand side just to kind of make this easy and to make everything symmetrical as we go around now we're going to place solid blocks on top of each piston like so 
Now, starting with your opening right here, go ahead and place a temporary block right there to place a observer on. You're gonna want the observer looking out like this. And we're gonna come around and we're gonna place an observer on all, like beside all four blocks all the way around, just like this. And then now beside the piston that's beside the hole, go ahead and place a powered rail here. Now next, fit coming out of this block, place a repeater on two ticks. Do that again, a repeater on two ticks. And again, a repeater on two ticks. This has made our trident kill. Oh, now this has made our trident killer. If I just get it synced up here, let me go ahead and turn this off, turn it back on and you'll see the trident killer is working as intended. And the reason we've done it this way is it slows down the trident killer enough to allow the items and XP to come out right here. I'm gonna knock this block out right here. I'm gonna put a trap door under here. This will keep any baby zombies from getting out. And then finally, I'm gonna take a water bucket. I'm gonna waterlog this piston that's like right across from the, the rail right here. Put water in that, block it off. And now you'll see I have a water flow here. And what that'll do is any items that the mobs drop, you'll see they will all eventually make their way out. As far as the rest of this is concerned, we can close it all off. And then for now, we have a little on off switch here. I don't I don't need to keep it running. We're going to turn it off. And now you can see the whole like catching system. It's all done. The mobs will fall down there into the trident killer. You're going to want to put at least two tridents in here. And if you have the ability to do it make sure those tridents have impaling five and you're just going to throw those in here and they will sit in here. And then when the, the farm is turned on, those tridents will get pushed around and they will automatically kill the mobs. And if you have your uh, looting three sword out, you will get the looting effect from those kills. Now, before we actually build the towers here, we need to build the collection system for this. Otherwise, you're going to start building the tower and your drops are going to get wasted. And one more thing you're going to need to collect in the system is a word about our sponsor, Spark Toast. If you want the best way to play Minecraft with your friends or family, then a Minecraft server from Spark Toast is your answer. A Minecraft server is a great choice as it has much less lag that allows you to see much further in your world than a realm does while also not requiring you to be online for others to play in it like a locally hosted world in your device does. To get started with Sparktoast, browse through their different tiers of server ranging from their very affordable budget series that offer better value per dollar than realms or their main lineup of enterprise servers that offer amazing performance at competitive prices. Once you have your server type, amount of RAM, and any add-ons that you may want selected and purchased, your server is ready to play on. If you need any help, Sparktoast has amazing customer support through their live chat on their website and on their Discord channel. Sign up today by clicking the link on screen now or in the description below and be sure to use code prowl at checkout to get 20% off your initial payment. Now the water collection system, we're gonna make a little bit easier than the one that I did in the uh, bedrock guide world. We're just gonna keep things pretty straightforward here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a little slit going straight this way. Did not mean to get rid of that block right there. And we're gonna use some packed ice here. This is where our items are gonna flow out and they're gonna flow across until they meet in the middle with the items that'll eventually come out of that farm right there. And then once they get to this little junction right here, they will go straight across this way like this where eventually all the items and all the XP, they'll come into some hoppers right here and we're gonna put in in just a minute. But first, we're gonna surround this with glass. It doesn't have to be glass, but I just like to use it because it makes it easy to see all of the items and all the XP flowing, which you'll probably want to be able to keep track of, at least in the early stages. And then finally, we need some water to move the items and XP this direction. So we're gonna put a water bucket right there. And every single time where that water ends, we'll go ahead, we'll place down a button, place down another bucket of water, and again, and again, and one more time. And then that will bring all of our drops to the center area here. Now we're gonna end up replacing a few of these right here with hoppers, but first I think I wanna get the floor down below me set up because we're gonna have all of our storage sitting right below here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a little platform here that's let's say about 10 blocks below here. And now we have ourselves a nice platform down here. We will want to make sure we light this up just to ensure that no mobs can spawn on this thing. But this is where we'll be able to bring in our items and our item sorter. Now, I'm kind of doing this part on the fly because items, item storage systems are usually not that hard to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bump in. Let's see. One, two, three, four and four five blocks in. So this will bring us four blocks in to our ice from the platform here. And we're going to face a hopper straight down into here. And then we know we'll, we're going to want to do this the same over here. So we're just going to go ahead and just get that set up right now. 
because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big loop of hoppers that goes all the way around. And this is what you should end up with a big loop of hoppers. Yes, this is going to be a decent amount of iron for a big enough storage system and item sorter to do all of this. But the reason that we're doing this is going to make sure that none of the items get lost in the system. All of them will eventually work their way into their place. And then we've left ourselves a four block gap with our platform below on each side just to give ourselves enough room to make the item sorters. OK, I got a little setup going here. I made some very minor modifications, um, sending all of the items to a center hopper here. That way, if some of the hoppers get clogged up due to a big influx of items that happen to come in, we don't have to worry about any of them skipping across and getting to the center. They send those down in this case by four hoppers to this ring of hoppers like we did earlier. And as you can see, I have some chests laid out with hoppers behind them. Um, it is the same on both sides. Now, of course, you can use whatever type of storage system you want. I would actually recommend probably doing something like a shulker box loader type system. Make sure you check me out on the Bedrock Guide World because that's what I will be doing there. But here we're going to keep things a little bit more simplistic and we're going to just make some basic item filters. So I'm going to start out with a row of blocks that comes all the way across here. Even with the hoppers that are in line with the chests, we're going to go up one right here and then come across with some blocks there. We're going all the way over for all of the hoppers that we are looking to do the sorted items with. With. And actually, you know what? I'm going to end one short here. We're going to leave three of these hoppers at the end for something else I'll show you in just a moment. We're going to put a piece of glass across here. We're going to come down one and over one with the temporary block and then put that right there. Come across here. And then we're going to come down one and over one here and then come across here. This is all the blocks we need to put in our redstone for our item sorters. This is going to be rather easy. We just need redstone comparators going into these blocks here. Redstone dust on all of this redstone torches across the back and repeaters going into here. Now, what we've made is a very simple, very basic item sorter. Now, first, before I explain how this thing works, what we're going to do is we're going to come to any of these hoppers here and we're going to start putting in the items that we want to actually be sorted. So first, we need to reserve four of the slots. The best thing to use for this is sub to prowl diamonds. Take a bunch of diamonds and name them sub to prowl. It makes everything work five times better. But if you don't want to do that, you can put any item here that will not be sorted through the system and any item that you might not accidentally drop into the system. You could use something like gravel or flint or whatever, just something that's not going to be running through the system or sub to prowl diamonds. Then you're going to put 41 of the item that you want to have sorted in this slot right here. And every time a 42nd item goes in, it will unlock lock long enough for that one item to drop out. Now, first of all, everybody asks, why not put in more filter items and then less of the item up front? If you do that, you run the risk of the system overflowing. If you happen to unload chunks, leaving or coming back or something breaks with the system, I do not 100% do not recommend that. Only put one item in each of these slots. As you can see, this row of hoppers right here by the red indicator I have with this texture pack, these are all locked. What is happening right now is the comparator is reading the number of items that are in here. It is reading enough of that signal to send one, two redstone dots across. It cannot send a third because the signal's not strong enough. This redstone torch is on right now, which means that this redstone repeater is on, which means that this block is powered, which means that this hopper is locked, which means that no items can come down in here. But if I put these in here and let it run through, we have a redstone signal of three until all those items just went through. And what's happening is it's allowing the gunpowder to drop itself down in here. Basically, whenever there's 42 items in that first slot right there, this redstone dust gets powered. This torch goes off. This repeater goes off. This hopper unlocks and the items are allowed to flow down. That is how these systems work. OK, so we've set up on both sides and I've done something here that you guys may want to follow. If you're going to make the same storage system, you're going to want to skip three in the middle. This is where we're going to throw away our non stackable items. I'll make a non stackable item filter here in just a moment. And then over here, we will have no filter at all in the last slot where everything else will go. And what is everything else you may ask? Well, we do have the primary items that you get the most of, which is rotten flesh, arrows, bones, gunpowder and string. And then everything else up here, we will get a smaller amount of now just according to however much you want the most of, you 
you know, we have a lot of gunpowder, a decent amount of uh, bones, some arrows. You can you can kind of like pull out of it whatever you want, but then everything else you're going to want to come into these right here. Now to do that non stackable item filter is actually the same as what we have there, but you're going to go up one block higher. And just to make sure we don't interfere with this, we're going to skip a row. So we're not going to do anything with this row at all. We can actually take these out right here and we're going to put blocks here, 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 here and there and do all the same bits that we did before, except this time we're not going to put anything in these hoppers here because what we want to happen is anything that is a stackable items. If we put those in here, like say these redstone torches, they will not stop in here. They will end up down here and any non stackable items, say this crossbow is an example, will make it down in here. Now to get rid of this, what we're going to do is we're going to pop all of these out, put this guy right here, put a dropper there, run a hopper into the side of that dropper right there as well. Now we're to come around to the back. We're going to put a temporary block here and a permanent block right there, a block right here, come out three, come out four, put a block right there, comparator, repeater, redstone, 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 and redstone, and put this in subtract mode. This makes us a clock. So now anytime there are items inside of here, whatever they are, it will constantly be kicking them out and it is going to kick them out into lava. All right, now we just got to do this on the other side and then we're going to get up to building the farm. Now, the next bit for us is to get up on top here and build the platform out from this inner set of blocks right here. We're going to want to go out six in each direction. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And on this side, make sure you do it from this inner row of blocks. So we already got one, two, three, four, five and six. Now fill all that in to make a platform. Next, we need to put a little border around here. So we'll put a block up here and go all the way around the outside. And then we are going to block off these four blocks right here. We're going to build this up one more high. And every one of these corners, we're going to build up those four blocks. And we're going to put some temporary blocks right here. And I will show you why. But before I show you why, you need to go ahead and take scaffolding and then fill in all of these spots all the way around this whole intersection. Now, once you have this filled in, you would not have filled in the center area, except we're going to fill in one row around here. Once we get this up, I will explain to you exactly why we're doing this and how it works. But first, we need some water. Go ahead and fill in these corners one more block high. Now, the easiest way to fill in all of this is going to be with ice. Now, if you do this ice on top of a piece of scaffolding and you break it, you get nothing. If you do it on top of a solid block and you break it, you get water. So what we do is we have temporary blocks down here that we're going to change over to scaffolding soon, but we're going to take ice and we're going to put ice in every other slot like this. If you don't want to do ice and you want to do buckets of water, you have to do it the same way. Go ahead and do your, your temporary blocks there. Put a bucket of water in every other slot and that would be the most efficient way to do it. But I'm telling you, ice is the easiest. Go find yourself some. Once you have that ice down, go ahead and take out your pickaxe and start running around and breaking. Once that is done, now go through here. You just get down below or however you want to do it and start breaking all of the blocks down here. And then once you get back top side, go ahead and put the scaffolding down. Make sure you do not forget any of these steps because you could break this layer of your farm or your whole farm potentially if you do not do this properly. Now, why did we do this? What did we do? So first of all, on Bedrock Edition, and yes, this is specifically on Bedrock Edition, not on Java Edition, all right? On Bedrock Edition, the mobs are able to spawn right here where I stand. They can spawn with their feet in the scaffolding and their heads in water. They can't do things the other way around. If their feet spawn in water, they won't spawn. The spawn attempt will fail. So we put them right here. And the reason why we have water over scaffolding is the second they spawn in, they start to get pushed towards the center. There's a couple of exceptions here. The baby zombies will wander around. Sometimes they'll jump up and get flushed down. Sometimes they will fall in the center and other times they will just despawn. And then spiders. Spiders will typically climb pretty quickly and then they will get flushed into the center. Everything else just gets flushed into the center right away and you don't have to worry about them. They work their way right on the way down. And the reason why we have this little lip right here done like this is because the mobs will not fight the current at the edge, which you typically have happen is skeletons and zombies and stuff they'll get right here to the edge and then they'll fight it they'll fight the current 
but they can't do that if they're all the way down here. They just get pushed straight to the center. It is by far the fastest way to flush them. You don't need to put buttons on the edges or anything like that. If you've done that before, don't do it now because it doesn't do anything. Just go ahead and do it just like this. And then last but not least, we're going to add a full layer of blocks all the way on top to cover this whole thing over because this is going to be the ceiling of this layer, making it only two blocks high. And then it is also going to be the floor of our next layer. As you see, we have the floor of our next layer in and we're just going to do the same thing we did here and we're going to repeat that. We're going to repeat it nine more times. There's going to be a total of 10 of these layers. And I do recommend doing 10 if you want the maximum speed, but at the very least, very least, do five more so you have a total of six. So anywhere from six to 10 layers on each of these. I'm going to go ahead and get this one built up first before we do the other ones because we need to go over how and why the roof of this thing works. I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can do the roof of this to make sure that you get surface bonds. Okay, so once we're at the top, we what you need to do is you need to make this layer a surface spawn layer. Now, if you put a solid block up here, guess what? It's not a surface spawn anymore. Can't do it. So we have a way to trick the game into doing it with a few different options. Now, regardless of what option you do, it doesn't matter. You need to do this first. You need bottom slabs to sit right above the water. The reason why you need this is because it blocks Endermen from spawning on this top layer. If Endermen spawn on this top layer, they're going to take up your mob cap because they cannot flow down through the system and get killed. So we have to have this here first. These bottom half slabs do still allow this top layer to be a surface spawn. If they were top slabs, they would not allow it. So that's part of the trick right here. Now, slabs do not block light, though. In Bedrock Edition, they allow light to come through, unlike Java Edition, where they don't. So having slabs up here on their own is not going to be enough. That's where our three different options come in. The number one option and the one that I like the most is tinted glass. All you got to do is go your find yourself an amethyst geode that's close to your base. After farming that out a few times, you should have enough tinted glass to be able to do this. But you'll probably have to go through and clear out all sides of the budding amethyst blocks. That way the amethyst shards can grow out on all four sides and you get more per harvest. What tinted glass does though, is it completely blocks light from coming through and it does actually allow you the ability to see through it yourself so you can see exactly what's going on down below. If you ever wanted to come up to the top of this thing and take a peek in, you see, I put this last one in right here and the whole thing has turned black and it's completely blocked off. Now I've already done two additional methods over here that you can do as well. Number one is leaf blocks. You're gonna need to build up from that top layer, which is right here. 15 blocks high with solid blocks all the way around. And then you need to cover only the top layer with leaves. If you do that, the light level decreases by one all the way down until it gets to the very bottom where it's a light level zero, which is what we need. That's method number two. Method number three is you can do a similar thing with water. Now, what I've done over here is I have temporarily put one row of solid blocks right here, and this is to make placing the water easy. You only need water on the top layer, and all you gotta do is go all the way around two sides, and once you do that, the rest of it will fill itself in. And then you just gotta go through and take all of those solid blocks out that were temporary blocks. And for every layer of water there is, the light level decreases by one, meaning that by the time we get down to the bottom, the light level is zero. Because again, like the other one, we have built this thing up 15 blocks high to allow for 15 layers of water. Lastly for this, go through on this top little ledge and put in some slabs here too, just to keep mobs from spawning. You could also light it up if you want to, put buttons down. There's a lot of things you could do, but I think the slabs look a little bit better, so I'm gonna fill that in. And I mentioned being able to see down through here, you can leave a five by five hole in the center for these slabs on that top layer because there's no spawnable blocks down there we have to worry about anyways. And this will allow you to kind of take a look down and see what's going on inside of the farm. Although keep in mind that 25 block no spawning radius around you. So if you stand right here, barely anything's gonna be spawning in there. But if you were to get up a little bit, you would be able to have the mob spawn and be able to see them spawn in and drop down. I added in a couple of final touches. We put some glass up on the top here just to keep anything from falling in here. Also, you will notice that this thing is gonna be spawning squid which is cool, so you'll be getting some ink as well. Um, as you see, everything leads in here, all the drops will go here. I have 
have put out all our tridents. We have one more thing that we need to do, I believe, before we can get this thing all started and settled. And that is we need to run redstone to all of the rails. That way we have one central location to turn this thing on and off from. So what I'm going to do, let me just put this here for now so that does not turn on. And then we are going to run redstone all the way to the middle. And we're going to do this on all sides. As you can see, all the redstone has now been run to this center spot right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath. I'm gonna put a lever right here. I'm gonna turn that on. Now we're gonna grab repeaters and every time this signal gets too weak to continue on, we're just gonna throw in a repeater to boost it back out again. And finally, now should be when we want to turn this thing off which turns the redstone dust off and should turn on all the trident killers. Let's just go double check that. That one's running. That one's running. That one we can see is running. And that one we can see is running. So with that being the case, we should be able to stand right here in the center. Mobs start to die. XP starts to run out to us. We have our looting three sword in hand, which means we get more loot from the mobs that are dropping and dying. And here come some of the drops now. Look at them go. Here comes the XP, we're getting the XP. There go the drops. Somehow this bow made it all the way through. I don't know how that happened. When you first turn the farm on, you may have a drop or two make it through if there's a lot of non-stackable drops. Just because the fact that all the mobs, they're kind of like clumped up in the bottom, you'll have 24 in the bottom of each one waiting to die. Now, for the last thing, let's sit here for an hour and let's see how much XP we get and let's see how many drops we get in an hour. We have a problem. We have a problem. It's too fast, everybody. Bruh. It's too fast. Um, It's getting into here and getting around. Okay. Um, I think that can be solved with more hoppers. Okay, so I believe I have solved the problem. This should pretty easily do it. What I did was I added one more row of hoppers at the top right here to curve around all the way to the end of this particular line, which actually probably should go more like right there. So now basically we end up with two rows of hoppers moving items. And as these ones down here, like get to the point where they're like filtering items out, that should pretty quickly and easily start emptying any of these hoppers up here, making it so items are still not skipping or anything like that. Um, so now I gotta I gotta start the timer over. This is why we run tests on these things to make sure that they work properly. And I did this one both sides. Okay, I have AFK for about an hour and a half and have a rough hourly rate for you. But before I give that to you, you should probably know a couple final changes I made because I was still getting a backup on one side and I don't know why. So what I did on the side that I was getting the backup on, I just put a row of hoppers going across to the other side that I was not getting to back up on. I can't tell you why I was getting so many non-stackable drops on one side and not the other, because at least for me in this world, I just used a structure block to copy each one of these over. So they're all 100% identical, they have to be. But I would just say that when you run it for the first time, you should probably watch and see how much stuff does happen to get backed up after say 20 to 30 minutes or so, and then make some adjustments like I needed to, to more evenly distribute the items. As far as drops per hour, I did do a measurement and we were at almost 20,000 drops per hour without any of the non-stackable items. So you're looking at roughly, if you keep those, about 22,000 uh, drops per hour. And when all you guys are wondering about the gunpowder, we got ourselves 3,000 225 gunpowder per hour. So run that into calculations. You're going to get yourself quite a bit. So if you enjoyed this mega quad mob farm, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you're going to be using all those drops for. And if you want to show support to the channel, pick up a channel membership. They're as low as $5 per month or drop a super thanks in the video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.